In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Around him were seraphim with six wings, with two they covered their face, with two they covered their feet, with two they flew. And they called to one another, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth is full of your glory. And the threshold shook at the sound of it all. And I cried out, Woe is me, for I'm a man of unclean lips, and I dwell among people of unclean lips, and I have seen the Lord, I shall surely die. And then one of the seraphim flew to the altar and took a coal and touched my lips and said, You are clean, you will not die. And then I heard a voice say, Whom can we send? Who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father, from our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. No wonder Isaiah should have cried out in despair when he had seen the glorious majesty of God before his very eyes. Because you see, the ancient Hebrews believed that if you saw God, you would die. Even Moses was not allowed to see God, not even on Mount Sinai. Even the seraphim with two wings covered their face. The seraphim are not allowed to see God. There's a whole explanation for that, but time does not allow. And yet, he overhears God say, who shall we send? Who can go for us? And in the exhilaration of being, having his life spared, he shouts out, here am I, what's wrong with me? Send me! And we have this awesome story of the majesty and the power of God that in all of the majesty that creates the heavens and continues to create them according to those who study the universe, this God who is in power over all of creation has time to worry about you and me and send people like Isaiah out with the news, the great prophetic news, if you repent, if you repent, then God will bless you. What news? We tend to think of God the Father as the, as the creator and kind of sitting back now on an eternal Sabbath, rocking in his heavenly chair, watching the creation go by. But God the Father is still busy, not only with further creation, but in your life and in mine. This God of all power and of all might, whose presence terrified Isaiah, still struggles and hungers for our salvation. Luther writes, I believe that God has created me in all that exists. He gives me daily my food, my raiment, my clothing, my housing, my family, my friends, and all that I need from day to day. And all this he does, not because I merit it, but out of his fatherly goodness. God the Father in all the majesty is continuing right now in this day, our Father, in all the active ways that means. Luther's evening prayer closes the day with these words. Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Let your holy angels have charge concerning me that the evil one have no power over me. God the Father continues to be our Father. But so active is God the Father, so restless is God the Father for your salvation and mine, that from the very beginning, the Son who was with him in all creation is dispatched to earth. St. Paul will write, though he was God, he did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself, took upon himself the form of a servant, and was born like us. The gospel lessons today says simply, God so loved the world that he gave his son so that we might not perish but have everlasting life. The same restless love that Isaiah experiences in a profound way is experienced by us in the good news of Jesus who reveals to us the Father. Jesus says, he who has seen me, seen the Father. I suppose it would say the same thing to say, he has heard me, has heard the Father. He came to demonstrate God to us and to purchase for us our salvation. 
not as Luther writes, with silver and gold, but with his very own precious body and blood. But then, even that is not enough. After historic moment of God walking the face of this earth in the person of his son, there comes the spirit. We celebrated in Pentecost. Pastor Matt led us through an expiring sermon on Pentecost and the gift of the spirit last Sunday. The third person of God, the third way we experience God. Paul writes simply, no one speaking by the Spirit can say Jesus Christ be cursed, but I tell you, nobody speaking by the Spirit can say that Jesus Christ is, everybody, no one can say Jesus Christ is Lord except by that Spirit. Luther writes again, I believe that I cannot by my own reason or strength believe in my Lord or come to him. But he calls me through the gospel and enlightens me with his gifts and sanctifies me in the true faith just as he calls, gathers, enlightens, and sanctifies the whole Christian church on earth and keeps us faithful until the day of Jesus Christ. Five huge active verbs about God. And Trinity Sunday, you see, is not the day in which we explain God. Who can do that? If I could explain God, I would, my mind would be as big as God. Ask my math professor in college about how small my mind was. <laughs> We're not here to explain God. We're here to celebrate the experience of God. Amen? Amen. Uh, slide back to being Lutherans. Amen? Amen. Better. We're not here to explain God. We're here to experience God in all of his might, in all of his power, in all of his glory. That's why we're here. And what a God this is. Peter has already talked to us about the closing hymn today. It's what I call a barn burner. It really should fire us up. Immortal, invisible, God only wise, in light and accessible, hid from our eyes, most glorious, most patient, the ancient of days, almighty, victorious, your great name we praise. Awesome. And it ends, and it ends like this. Oh, help us to see, tis only the splendor of light hideth thee. That's the awesomeness of God. And we'll sing four stanzas, if I'm remembering correctly, and all those verbs about the mighty, power and majesty of God over and over and over. You say, well, Pastor Ted, my bulletin doesn't say we're going to sing that. Well, it's the last hymn. <laughs> Trust me. So once I got over when I was assigned Trinity Sunday by the senior pastor, the sense that we're not here to explain God because Teddy Frank can't do that. We're here to celebrate God, who is our Father, who is our Redeemer in the Son, Jesus Christ, who is the Holy Spirit, who makes it even possible for us to believe. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen.